Howdy from Austin, Texas. My name is Richard Schneeman. We're going to talk about cookies and sessions in Rails. So when I say cookie, I don't mean like the type of thing that you eat. I am talking about the browser storage technology. So uh, you might have seen something like this where it says uh, a little checkbox that says remember me. Um, so whenever you check that, we are going to set a cookie in your browser. And it's actually going to uh, store some information locally in either Firefox or Safari or Chrome. And every single time that you submit a request after that, we are going to send that same piece of information back to the server. So this is, uh, this is kind of a unique uh, piece of technology, but it can be really expensive if you store a lot of information in a cookie, then every single time that you hit a new URL, you're going to be sending that, uh, that, all of that data. So because of that, we generally want to keep cookies small. Um, in the early days of the web, you might have heard about uh, you know all the malicious things. Uh, it was common practice to uh, keep cookies turned off. Generally, that's no longer the case, and um, they're relatively secure, and quite a few sites actually rely on them. So if you have them turned off, then, well, I don't know really how you function. All right, uh, so that was just kind of a brief introduction into cookies, and that's not a Rails thing. That is a like, kind of a browser technology, but Rails can certainly use it. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is session. So whenever a user logs into your website, site, they've started a new session. Uh, you can kind of see this if you take a look into, say, Facebook or Twitter or, you know, really any site that has a login. Um, here I'm logged in as me, Richard Schneeman, and I'm going to see different things than everyone else. Um, you know, here's photos from my friends, uh, you know, uh, two, two dogs looking super cute. Um, and Facebook knows that I am signed in because it has created a, a session for me. So uh, we need to remember who is logged in, but how can we do that programmatically inside of Rails? Uh, well, since we just talked about cookies, we can actually store session data in cookies, believe it or not. And the type of data that we can store is going to be user ID and logged in state. So I'm going to log in as, um, as Richard, and it, I'm going to provide a username and a password to Facebook. Facebook is going to, in turn, tr uh, pull a user based on that email, verify that the password's correct, and then they're going to say, okay, well, we are going to now write your, this user ID that we pulled from the database into a cookie. And um, then every single web request after that I make, I don't have to provide my username and password. They can just say, okay, well, we already have your ID in this cookie, so uh, we know that you have a current session. Um, and this is also why libraries ask that you sign out of sites like Facebook and Twitter whenever you're leaving, because Facebook doesn't really know who you are. They just know that you previously authorized that account with a browser on that computer. So if you, and, and it is going to be different uh, between different browsers. So if you authorize with uh, Chrome and don't sign out, then the next person who comes in and uses Chrome and just visits Facebook is going to have access to all of your, um, all of your account. So by, by default, um, Rails is going to encrypt the session data. Uh, one question people commonly ask is, well, you know, hey, if, if it says I'm logged in as user number three, what's to prevent, and it's stored locally, what's to prevent me from going in and just saying, okay, well, we're going to change um, user number three to user number four. Well, we encrypt the session data, or Rails is going to encrypt the session data, and it's signed so that um, if you... You, you, first of all, you won't be able to read it. You won't be able to see that it says three. Um, and even if somehow you could, and then you could change it to four or five, then it wouldn't, then Rails would say, okay, this is invalid. This is um, not a valid uh, cookie, not a valid session, um, unless you Rails, or unless someone has access to your, um, the keys that you were using to, to generate and sign those cookies. So this is, uh, this is one reason why um, if you follow the, 12 factor app um, and the the config part of that storing your configuration on the environment uh, is one really important part if you are ever open sourcing an, a rails application that you take those uh, those secret tokens and move them out of your application and maybe into an environment variable 
All right, uh, so that is a quick introduction into cookies in session, and um, there are some other ways we can store data in session um, other than the cookie, but uh, generally that's just what I do. Next up, we're going to be talking about email and rail.